Hold on, I forgot to uh, turn on my headsets. Let's see here. Give me one second. I should have done that before I got started here. <clears throat> Let me get this turned on. Sorry about this. Connect. There we go. All right. The Bluetooth is on. Repo Man 64. How's everybody doing? We flying up to heaven? When's the rapture? Has anybody figured this out yet? I've been listening to so many uh, channels as of late trying to uh, figure out when the rapture is going to occur. And the flood day was perfect. It was the perfect day. I mean, it was 2,595 days after the Revelation 12 sign. It's 2,595 days to the uh, Hanukkah. Um I have a, a picture I'll show you. There is a discussion that Jesus went up. It's talking about tabernacles, but then it says he didn't go this to this one, but he went up in the midst of a feast. And they're saying maybe he went up in the midst of the feast of dedication, which is Hanukkah. Now, when you do the math from 2595 and you go forward halfway through that feast would be November the 5th. November the 5th, Super Tuesday, that's Election Day. So where, where are we at now? November the 3rd. So did uh, God need us here to cast our votes before we went? I don't know. Uh, between the 2595 two dates, if you wait 10 days, if you count 2595 from November the 10th, the day Noah got off the ark, uh, you land at the end of Hanukkah. As a matter of fact, you land when um, Adam uh, was removed from the garden. Is that the day, the last day, when everybody's invited into the millennium? It matches as well. So we find, as we go forward, matches, um, and that's what we're looking for. We're looking for things that, that coincide with, obviously, what's written in the Bible. And uh, it's just our understanding of what we're seeing as we go forward, trying to figure it out. And that's all we're trying to do. We're trying to figure it out. So let's share the screen and I'll go through these pictures. Oh, uh, before I share, let me close this real quick. I will be on uh, live tonight with... Um, Black Swan, Shane over at Black Swan has invited me. I was on yesterday with End Times Talk, and uh, <clears throat> I'll be on. I'll be on here at five p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Black Swan. If you're not subscribed to Shane's channel, please do so. He does a lot of good work. Uh, we all have a different piece of the puzzle. We all come at this a different way. Um, I, I I've said that in so many programs uh, that you're all super important. Never think because you don't understand what I'm saying or understand what Shane over at Black Swan is saying or what Josh over at End Times Talk is saying or Bob Barber. I think he's on there tonight too. Uh, just because we all have we all approach it slightly differently, we all have the same message and that is jesus christ came that's a fact as a matter of fact i don't think there's any culture that denies the fact that he was here where it begins to differ is what you think happened after he was here he died on a cross and on the third day he rose and on that cross he said it is finished he paid the penalty took our place that's it and that's all it's a free gift and all you have to do is accept that free gift that's it it's that simple if you uh, show fruits after that, great, but those fruits don't, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> get you more saved. I don't even know where that came from. All right, let's uh, share the screen. <coughs> and let's go here. 
I think here. Oh. Oh no, here, here, here. All right. <coughs> My goodness. Whoops, I didn't mean to do that. There we go. Move me up out of the way. Now, like I've said in so many different videos, <coughs> the Gospel of Luke is talking to us. If you go in here and read the Gospel of Mark and the Gospel of Matthew, you will see a different set of things that they will be looking for. <coughs> now, everything that we've been looking for, we've seen. The last thing is the sea and the waves roaring. And I showed you in this clip here in the Bible, in Isaiah 17, where the waves and the seas roaring is likened to a multitude of people, the rushing of nations, which is what we're seeing right now with this war going on in Israel and Iran. They're called birth pangs. And the further forward we go, the more intensified the birth pangs will get. I've been watching the earthquakes, and they have been just going off the chain today. They have been anything, and I only look at 4.0 and above, and I've noticed a bunch of 5.0s that are jumping in there. Greece had a 5.3. Medang had a 5.0. So it's it's increasing. It increases and then it slows down for a few hours. And then it increases more and it slows down. So we're seeing it. There is no there is no formula that we've figured out yet to know when the exact day is. However, God will not share his glory with another. And at the end of the day, God is going to be the one to tell us. And that's what Amos 3, 7 clearly says. He will do nothing lest he warn the prophets and saints first. He's going to tell us. If you are not watching, he's not going to tell you. Revelation 3, 3. So, as we go forward, and as we do all of our math, there's a lot of channels that do math, other channels that look at world events, other channels, they, there's so many channels looking at different aspects, I watch all of them, because everyone has a piece uh, guiding us to when the rapture is going to occur, and I'm going to give you a, a scenario like I just did here a moment ago, let's see here, let's enlarge this one more time. Where are we at right now? Right here is where the flood began. This is when Adam sinned. This is when the flood began. Judgment, God brought judgment on Adam on this day, and he brought judgment on the world on this day, on the Nephilim, and destroyed them. So, the night of October the 31st, leading into November the 1st. <clears throat> now, we passed that, and we thought that should be it. And that the 2595 from this day here backwards is the Revelation 12 side. And 2595 forwards comes here to Hanukkah. It's perfect. But there's a discussion about Jesus going down to the festival halfway through. And that discussion says, no, it was not over here on Tabernacles halfway through. Or it could have been. But he also went, it was, it's like when we read about, it's like this. It's exactly like this. When we read about this event <clears throat> here. Um, let's see here. Mary and Martha. Let me see where it's at. I've forgotten here. Okay. Mary and Martha are unclean. Because they buried Lazarus. There is a ceremony that they have to perform after three days. And on the seventh day, they are clean. They could not have a meal with Lazarus until the eighth day, which Jesus did. But they conflate these two stories together because you can read clearly that he's there and his feet are being cleaned by Mary. The same thing here. It speaks of a meal that he has with Simon the leper, who was a leper, who was made pure, white, uh, made clean, and he was at this meal here where now she's doing the same thing. Mary's doing the same thing. She's not only um, cleaning his feet, she's doing that here as well, but she's also anointing his head. Why is she doing this? She's doing this <clears throat> because it is the four days 
before one, two, three, four, the four days before Jesus goes to the cross. He is anointed. The lamb is brought in and they anoint it and they hold on to it for four days and then they sacrifice it, which they did here. <clears throat> the last supper happened here at nightfall. It was the 13th. On the 14th is when Jesus goes to the cross. All a ton of stuff happened here in this 24 hours. He um, has the last meal. He is betrayed by Judas the Iscariot, Iscariot for 30 pieces of silver. He is in the garden praying and they would not stay awake. Uh, Judas shows up and betrays him with a kiss. The, the soldiers take him to Pontius Pilate. And by that, Three o'clock in the afternoon of being hung on a cross, he gives up the ghost. He is in full control of his death. Nobody uh, killed him. He he gave up the ghost. So, And then the same thing happens as the Jews leave Israel. That night, they were to make haste on this day, not this day, not at nightfall here, nightfall here. They were to make haste 24 hours later. They were to make haste kill the Passover lamb, put blood above their doors, and what happened? The Jews leave Egypt on Nisan 15. The instructions came from God to Moses on this day. This now is the head of your year, and Nisan 1, and then 14 days later, they killed the Passover lamb, and on the 15th, they left Egypt in the middle of the night. <clears throat> if the flood occurred, which I think most cultures agree. Some people will still hang on to their timelines and say the flood happened. They will try to make the flood happen down here. They will try to make it begin on November the 10th, 11th. This is not, this is Heshvon 27. This is the day he left the ark. But because of the math that they're going through, they will say that it happened here. Some are even stating that right here, uh, and I think it's I think it's this day here they're calling it Tishri one. In order to call this Tishri one, that would mean you are if you call this Tishri one, October the thirty first or November the first, you're forty seven days away from the actual calendar. And if you're forty seven days away, the Bible and clearly teaches that one hundred fifty days after the flood begins that the that the waters began to recede, and then three days later, it set down on Mount Ararat, reversed the curse. So whatever date you choose for the flood, you would have to say 150 days later is the cross. So if you say the flood began all the way, if you say the flood began here on November 10th, that would mean that you would have to say the that the, uh, the cross happened on April the 9th. If you say this is Nisan 1, I'm sorry, Tishri 1, and, and you are 87 days away, I'm sorry, 47 days away, you would have to add 47 days to March 30th, which would bring you to April 30th, May 17th. May 17th would be your date that he goes to the cross if you're trying to use this date for the Tishri 1. Like I said, it has to lock in. It has to be biblical. If you're going extra biblical and jumping all over the place with the moon, you'll never know. And you won't be biblical in that when the flood started, 150 days after this day right here would be the day Jesus goes to the cross. It's 150 days from the uh, the flood. 150 days from the flood to the day Jesus went to the cross. And then three days later, the ark rested on Mount Ararat, reversed the curse. And Jesus completed everything and then rose, I believe, at three o'clock in the morning, 84 hours after he gave up the ghost on the cross uh, at Nisan 18. So <clears throat> in order to believe, like I said, whatever date you want for the flood, as in the days of Noah, do your math. Just do your math. Add 150 days. That's when Passover has to be. It has to be because that's what the Bible teaches. And then three days later, Jesus rises. And it has to happen right here. It has to happen. The ark has to rest. So whatever, if you say that it's 10 days later, if you say, let's say you're saying that November the 10th is the flood, we got to go 10 days further than this. We can keep Nisan 14 because that we know that's when it happened. But 10 days further would be April the 9th. Right here, it would be April the 9th. The problem with doing this is 
that if it's April the 9th, the day Jesus went to the cross, that would be a Saturday. But we know Jesus went to the cross on a Wednesday. The days have to match up. Not the days of the Gregorian calendar. The Gregorian calendar is wrong. 150 days must land exactly on a Wednesday. Jesus went to the cross on a Wednesday. It has to. So in essence, um, Nisan 14 will always be on a Wednesday. It never changes. Because in a 364-day calendar, this is what will happen. Now, the problem that I've run into, and I think I have a fix for it, honestly. I finally sat down and just thought it through. And <clears throat> Adar 31, there's only 364 days in a year, giving one day to four of the months, being 30, 30, and 31, 30, 30, and 31. We come to the last day of the year, Adar 31, which I have is March 16th. The reason it comes to March 16th is because I've had to hide a day. I've had to hide a day and I've moved it around. I don't know where to put it. And I finally realized I don't have to put it anywhere. I don't know how much work it would be for Sister Sandy to fix this, but it's very simple. This is the first day. This day matches. The day of equal parts is back here on the 16th. This is the first day. You would add four minutes. Then you would add eight minutes. Then you would add... 12 minutes, then you would add 16 minutes, then you would add uh, 20 minutes, and you would go on adding four minutes a day in order for, remember, the, the, the earth, uh, that fulcrum point on the earth that points at that distant star, the fact that it truly spins 364 times in a year, the extra four minutes is where it needs to create solar noon. And it has to move four more minutes to that fulcrum point to our local sun to create the solar noon. <clears throat> four minutes times 364 days equals 26 something. And it, what it adds up to, or it adds up to a day and a quarter, 24.2666. It adds up to a day and a quarter each year, which is why you would have to add four minutes to each single day. So. We don't really need to hide a day. We just need to add four minutes to each day. And by the time we get down to here, we would have 24 hours. 24 hours, and that would become technically March 15th, 16th down here. It, 15th would happen twice, it's, if, I, if that's explainable, if that's even more understandable, that, there, that were four minutes off per day. Now, this is the only thing I can think of as to why the rapture didn't occur on Halloween. It is 2,595 days. It's a 1,260, 1,260, the 30, and the 45 to make the 1,260, 1,290, and the 1,335. All of those combined together would be 1,260, 1,260, and 75. From this day here, go back, you hit the Revelation 12 sign. That's perfect. From this day forward to 2031, you hit December 9th, actually. But if you make the day inclusive, you hit the day Hanukkah. Hanukkah is always on December the 8th. It never moves. Kislev 24. This is the Feast of Dedication. So the middle of this feast would be back here. And uh, where was it? This is when Adam was removed. So the middle of the feast would be somewhere around December. Is it December the 11th? Or maybe it's here, actually. It's, it, 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 it might be here. The middle of it would be where the flood actually. Remember, it rained for 40 days and 40 nights. But he was up in the air for 150 days. And then the waters began to recede. And after three days, uh, the ark rested on Mount Ararat. And again, from this date up here on October the 31st, it must land on the cross. It must. The, the moment Jesus died. And then three days later, when it sets on Mount Ararat, it must land on the day Jesus rose. So here we have the flood ending on December 12th. No, I'm not saying that that, that is for our 2024. This is for 2024. 31. So what happens, the only thing I can think of happens is there is a 10-day gap. 
between, and I've always, and I've often asked why Lord did the flood begin on October the 31st and then end on November the 10th? Because the middle of that is November the 5th. Now I know it's election day, which in and of itself is huge. Is God waiting? I mean, he wouldn't wait, but isn't it ironic how mankind puts Super Tuesday on November the 5th, right? Like this is Super Tuesday. Isn't it ironic how that is right in the center of the flood beginning and the flood ending? We see these two examples of God coming in the midst. This is the midst of it when the flood begins here when God shuts the door and the flood and he exits the ark into a brave new world. Is this the date that we should begin to count from going forward 2,595 days? We will not land. No ex exits the ark and goes into a brave new world. Adam exits the garden and goes into a scary world. Are they going to exit the ark and go into a brand new world into the millennium on this date? You see what I'm saying? So you follow me what, with what I'm saying here? Eshvon 27, November the 10th, you count 2595 from that day, from the day they got off of the ark, and you land over here. You land 10 days later, and you will land over here where uh, Adam was removed from the garden. So some at some point to, between here and back here on Halloween, we have 10, we have 10 days, 10 and a half days. Actually, if you do the math, it's forget exactly uh, how many hours. I, I think it was, uh, I don't recall, 13, 15 hours added to that. If you do the four minutes a day for 239 days, you will wind up, I believe, at 15 hours. So it would have happened at nightfall here on the flood. So midway through November the 5th, perhaps at nightfall. Remember, they begin counting at 8 p.m. on Tuesday. So that would be very interesting to see. This is just me putting another idea out there, hoping as I do this that I jog the minds of others to perhaps say, wait a minute, look at this and look at this. And that's kind of what I would love to see happen right now. My next high watch day will be November the 5th. Between, exactly right in the center, right in the midst of when the flood began, one year later in 10 days, and when the flood ended, one year and five days on November the 5th. So, let me keep moving forward here. Now, in 2025, next year, they will say that this solar eclipse is Nissan 1. That means that <clears throat> I believe this would it, to get an eclipse. I think you have to have a uh, yeah. You would have to have no moon. It would be no moon. So they would call this March 29th, March 30th. They would call it uh, Nissan One. However, at nightfall on March 29th is when Jesus uh, did the Last Supper and began everything he did until he died on the cross at three o'clock in the afternoon on March the 30th. So they will be, um, this time they will be early. No, they will be late because March 16th is, the 17th is actually, they'll be 12 days behind right here on the, in 2025. Another thing I noticed as I was doing this math, that from November the 1st to the cross, of March 30th, it's 150 days, five months. Now we passed that. But what if there's a delay to when Jesus rose those three days? What if we go three days more and wind up in November the 4th, the 5th? So I went to November the 3rd, did the math to the day Jesus rose. And there's actually a period of time in there from the time he enjoyed the Last Supper to the time he actually rose on that Sunday. If it was Wednesday, you got Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. You've got five days. Those five, and I know it's three, but you don't count any portion of the first day at three o'clock in the afternoon. You don't count any portion of the last day uh, as him re rising at some point after dark, which I think it was 3 a.m., 84 hours. So 
there's technically five days in there, three days exclusive. So five months to resurrection at 3 a.m. on April the 4th would be, in 2025, would be exactly 153 days. Is Are we looking at this 150, 153 as being connecting to us right now? Now, this is the passage that we read. Yes, Jesus went up to the temple halfway through the Feast of Dedication, also known as Hanukkah, according to the Bible's Gospel of John. Now, in the midst of the feast, Jesus went up unto the temple and taught. Jesus visited the temple during the Feast of Dedication. Jesus' appearance at the Feast of Dedication fulfilled the festival and revealed more about his person and work. Jesus' declaration that he was the Messiah fulfilled the Feast of Dedication which could also be called Messiah Day or Christ Day, revealed more about Jesus, the Feast of Dedication, along with the Jewish celebrations, revealed more about Jesus' person, and it got cut off. So, I did some math. I told you this before. If you add to October the 31st of 2017, 2595, you land on Hanukkah. That was bad math. I don't know why I chose October, October the 30th. Oh, I went forward. Okay. I just wanted to show you that it, it does the same thing in 2024 from Halloween forward. It would go to December the 8th of 2020, uh, 2031 as well. So 2595. So 2595 fits, 1260, 1260, the 30, and the 45, which is the 1260, 1290, and the 1335. That all fits, and it lands on the first day of Hanukkah. The midst of Hanukkah, however, would be um, four days later, so December the 12th, or uh, right before December the 16th, when Adam was removed from the garden. Now... <clears throat> When I add 2595 to November the 3rd, we land here on the middle of Hanukkah, December the 12th, which today is November the 3rd. So we would have to go exclusive. I'm still trying to hang on to these numbers. And to me, it seems as though there is a gap in between the 2595. And, and when you count 2595 back and forward, it actually lands on important times. All right. We have to remember that in the Bible, it says, after two days, he will revive us. In the third day, he will raise us up and we shall live in his sight. So we associate this with the 2000 years and on the 3000 years. So what we're doing right now is every event that we come up to was 2,000 years ago, or 1,993 years ago, and next year we'll begin 1,994 years ago. Uh, we are experiencing everything from the cross that happened in March to every event, Passover, the, the Feast of First Fruits, the Pentecost, all those events are timed events. The last event that we're coming up on here is going to be Hanukkah, which is mathematically working out to be 2031 deduct 2595 coming to uh, november the 4th 5th now when i read this what the, what they just pointed out and what i in what i just read jesus teaches at the feast after these things jesus walked in galilee for he would not walk in jewry because the jews sought to kill him now the jews Feast of Tabernacles was at hand. His brethren therefore said unto him, Depart hence and go into Judea, that thy disciples also may see the works that thou doest. All right, so we see here it says Tabernacles, right? And we know that that's John 7, back there, John 7. So what does it say just down here in 14? Now, let me enlarge that. Now, in the midst of the feast, Jesus went up into the temple and taught. The debate is, he said, I'm not going 
to this feast. But then it talks about he went up in the midst of a feast. And the debate is, much like what we see with their confusion on uh, the meal that Jesus was at when his head was anointed, it was not at Lazarus's house the day before, because in that one, it says the, the cross is six days away, Passover six days away. But on this, but he must be anointed four days prior. So he eats at Lazarus's house during the daytime. The next day at sunset, which is technically two days, he has his head anointed, which is now four days before the cross. He has to be anointed four days prior to the cross. And he's at, um, is it Nicodemus's house or the Pharisee's house uh, that he cured? And he is now getting his head anointed. And it is after sunset, which made it the following day. So they conflate the two stories together, but they're not. They're different. She washed his feet at Lazarus' house. She washed his feet in his head or anointed his feet in his head. Uh, that evening, the next day, that evening, becoming two days in uh, the Pharisee's house. The same thing, I, I'm wondering if, if that's not what's happening here. Now, about the midst of the feast, Jesus went up into the temple and taught. What feast? Are we talking about tabernacles here? I know it's in, it, it's in 714, and tabernacles was spoken of back here in 7-1. But then we see this. That's my question. Whoops. Oh, got to enlarge. That's my question. Are, were, when it's said back there that he went up in the midst of the feast, was it this one that he went up in the midst of? It's talking about it just three chapters later, and it was at Jerusalem in the Feast of Dedication, and it was winter, and Jesus walked into the temple in Solomon's porch, and then came the Jews round about him and said unto him, How long dost thou make us doubt? So is this where he went in? The midst of the feast is this myth talking about going forward to the dedication or backwards to tabernacles. That's the big question. These, uh, let me see where that was. Did I lose it? Or maybe it's the other way. Hold on. I lost it. Let me see where it's at real quick on my phone. It's much faster. Let's see here. Yeah, that was, I had almost made it there last time. Now, where did I do? Oh, it was in the middle. Sorry about this. There, right here. So you, the, these people have worked on this. Jesus went up halfway through the feast. I just typed that in, and this is what they came up with. They believe that this was speaking to the Feast of Dedication, the, the Feast of, uh, uh, well, uh, Hanukkah. Yes, Jesus went up to the temple halfway through the Feast of Dedication, even though we read that he didn't go to the Feast of Tabernacles, and yet then we suddenly see him talking about going up in the midst of a feast. It doesn't say Feast of Tabernacles, and these people did a lot of work on this, and they believe that he went up in the midst of uh, the Feast of Dedication, also known as Hanukkah. Again, John 7 says tabernacles, but he clearly says in here, is, is, you guys go, I'm not going, they're looking to kill me, I, I'm not going to go up there, I will not show myself, it's not his time yet, and he stays there, and then the next thing we see is Jesus went up in the midst of the feast. Is this passage speaking to tabernacles back there, or Hanukkah forward? Just three chapters for which that's what the discussion was that I read. And here's the Feast of Dedication. The thought process is that he didn't go up in the Feast of Tabernacles, that he went up in the Feast of Dedication halfway through. All right. William 
Pierce did a really good video discussing 1111. I highlighted this. I think you should have a lot more subscribers than this. Remember, these channels are going to be what's left after we go. And he did a really good, he did some really good math here looking at this uh, for 11, 11, you know, it's November the 11th. It's the 11th month and the 11th day. It is, let me look at something here. Let me zoom in. All right. This is the 11th event, the 11th time marker. When I studied uh, Noah's Ark and all the time markers, there were exact dates and there were periods of time. And when I put them all in, I found out that um, the 11th date given lands on November the 11th of the Gregorian calendar. Whoops, let go. And it is Heshvan 27, which is 827. I thought that was... Uh, Pretty incredible. It's the 239th day of the year. And I had to hide a day here because I didn't I didn't think about just adding, just putting plus four, eight, uh, 12, 16 to each day. By the time I get down here, I think it would be plus 0. 0.15333 three, three, if I recall correctly, or it might've been back here. So 15 hours and uh, 33 seconds is what it would have uh, wound or 33 minutes and 33 seconds, 15 hours, 33 minutes, 33 seconds offset by the time we reach here, October the 31st. So this is a very high watch date as well. November the 11th, the 11th time event. If you go in and read Noah, you will get 11 different time events. I've showed them to you. The, the, the first time event is Heshvan 17 which is Halloween, but then it says in yet seven days, which means seven days earlier, this is when God told him to get into the ark. He told him to get in the ark. He sits in the ark with the door open for seven days. God did shut the door on the day the rain began. He did not shut the door back here. Um, he did on the self-same day, the self-same day being this is the day he went in. The self-same day is the day the flood started. It actually started on a Monday. That's when the flood began. And then you go down here, it rained for 40 days and 40 nights until December the 12th. December the 12th, ironically, falls perfectly in the center of Hanukkah. Hanukkah is a starts on December the 8th, and Noah's, uh, Adam's removed from the garden on December the 16th, on the fourth month and first day. And so that's the third event. The fourth event, I don't think it's down here, I think it's the cross, because you have to count 150 days later. Let me come up here. Yes, the fourth event is the cross. It must happen 150 days after, just like the Bible says. Um, I've worked out all these dates and time differences. And then you come over here. Number five, this is the day the ark rested on Mount Ararat, reverse the curse. Date number six. It's harder when the, there it is. This is when the tops of the mountains were seen. It records that he saw the tops of the mountains in i think it said the 10th month in the first day which to us is the uh fourth month and the first day you see how that happens and then adam is removed just six months later exactly so that's number six number seven the dove and the raven are sent out and then seven days and and i don't know if it's the self same day i've thought about these three events seven eight nine actually being here eight and nine because they would line up perfectly with Jesus being baptized right here. They would all line up perfectly. Because the reason I say that is because it says, and seven days later. Well, that's the same words we got from the Bible when it says that um, in yet seven days I will flood. But then it says in the self same day, he shut the door. People are assuming that that self same day simply means, well, in the day it began to rain is the day he shut the door. No. He went into the ark seven days earlier on a Monday. And that self same day, one week later, it began to rain. And that's when God shut the door, this self same day. So that's why I'm beginning to think that number eight, 
and number nine actually belong here on August 1st, August 8th, and then Jesus is baptized on August 15th, a low one. He begins his 40-day fast. So I would be a day off and two days off on, on this one here, as I understand it. Now, event number 10 is over here. The Bible says that in the, um, well, it's Tishri 1. For us, it would be the seventh month of the first day. But for Noah, it was the first month in the first day, Tishri 1. And we have this perfect count, this absolutely perfect count. And if it were put anywhere else, it wouldn't land here. Day five of creation, the day of trumpets, Noah removes the covering. He does it on the first day of the first month, which is September the 15th. Absolutely perfect. Now, we have 10 events. And then, of course, number 11, 11, 11, and the 11th. Uh, number time stamp we have for Noah's Ark is 11 of them, and it lands on November the 11th. So that's could be why we're all seeing this 11 11 because at some point in the mist, remember in Luke, the curtain that was hanging there was torn from top to bottom, it was rent from top to bottom, except in Luke, it was rent in the midst, it was rent in the middle. It God's been telling us for so long. That it's the middle of something. What if it's the middle of the 2595? There is a 10-day pause. We're in jail for 10 days, but it's in the middle of it. It's not November the 10th. It's in the middle here on November the 5th. What if this is the day or here? You know what I'm saying? What if it's in the midst of it? And we keep seeing this midst all the time. All right. How long does it take me to get back to where I was? William Pierce, please subscribe to his channel. He did a uh, he did a really good video here uh, describing uh, what he's looking at as eleven eleven. All right. Now, when I do from November the eleventh of twenty twenty four to Israel becoming a nation or being a nation for eighty years, a total of eighty years, Israel became a nation on May fourteenth, nineteen forty eight. Eighty years to the day later will be May thirteenth, twenty twenty eight. That'll be the last day. Anything after that, and it becomes, uh, I think it would be come would it become eighty one years or a portion of over eighty? I don't, I'm not sure. But look at the timestamp here: three years, six months, three days, three six three, all threes, four threes, right there. November the 11th of 2024. So in my opinion and what I've been saying is we really, we can't be here obviously to see the tribulation begin, but there is this Terry that we constantly see. We constantly see this Terry. Um, and of course we're seeing it now. Well, it's been Terry. We've all called out, not all of us, but many of us have called out a high watch day and it's come to pass. And there's no shortage of people reminding us that it came to pass. I'm fully aware that it passed because we're all still standing here. Nobody saw a rapture occur. So we're simply trying to figure it out. And it would be great, obviously, if everyone would get involved in trying to figure this out. But this right here jumped out at me as November the 11th of 2024. Uh, we don't have much time left here. The rapture is going to happen as we watch the earthquakes just go off the chain and we all see all the posturing happening between Israel and Iran. And now we're seeing North Korea blowing up bridges. I think uh, it was Brenda Weltner that had a dream that the second um, she saw North Korea attack South Korea, uh, was when the rapture occurred, which I thought was pretty cool. What if this is the 10 day delay? What if there, what if there's a delay? We were supposed to go here, but it's more looking more like at some point here. But in the midst of this is November the 5th in between here. It's technically 10 days, but if you do the math on the four minutes a day, it's actually uh, 10 days, 15 hours, and 33 minutes and 33.3333 seconds on that day, if I remember correct. Adding the four minutes a day to each day. So I I remember this passage in the Bible. What if, and, and I've heard people say this, what if it's already begun, but it begins in the house of God? What if they're being they're on trial right now 
and there's a war going on in heaven right now. And when they're kicked out is when we go up. And I heard a really good teaching that says all the positions that those, even though they're wicked, they still have positions to keep uh, in heaven to keep uh, everything going. Even, uh, you know, a thief won't crash a train. You know what I'm saying? Because he's on the train. So he's, he's keeping the train going. Might be a thief, but he's still keeping the train going. And the same thing. All these evil angels uh, hold positions that we will take over when we get there. And each of us have been groomed uh, at, at, to that position that we'll have to uh, take over when we get to heaven. And we will be very well suited for whatever position. We'll be very happy with the position we get. For the time has come that judgment must begin in the house of God. What if there's this huge war going on up in heaven right now and God is cleaning house? He's cleaning house and he's about to kick them all out to come down here. Everything will be normal until the second the rapture occurs. Then it will become very abnormal. It will not be uh, the your average day after the rapture occurs. It will be quite, it'll be something else here on planet Earth. So, and if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? And of course, the question is, you know, if you knew what was going on in heaven right now, uh, you'd be getting on your knees right now and accepting the Lord and saying, please, Lord, don't, don't leave me here to go through that nightmare. But alas, we see that most people will only believe when they see. And I think that's most people. And I think that that is the great multitude that will come to knowledge and understanding uh, the day the rapture occurs. That's the day they will believe and they will go into tribulation. So that's my, I got to upgrade my driver's license, get my, uh, get my hazmat put back on my CDL. All right. So now where do I go to stop share here? That's all I have. That's as uh, as confident as I am about the myths. We see those passages. We passed the 2595. We're coming up on November the 5th, Election Day. We're coming up on the midst of this 2595, where if it kicks off on November the 11th, it goes to the end now of, it actually goes to when Adam is removed from the garden on to that one. So, it's really cool how um, there seems to be this 10-day gap. 10 days, I forget how many, 15 hours, 33 minutes, and uh, 33 seconds, I believe. So it's in there, right? It's written in there. And of course, then we see that judgment begins in heaven. What if it's going on right now up there? We just don't know. But we kind of do because as I'm watching, I've been watching the earthquakes going off. And they have increased exponentially. Here, it's literally in the past hour, we've had, looks like about eight earthquakes over 4.0. I just look at 4.0 because that's substantial enough to catch everyone's attention. And they are just off the chain. They'll go up, they'll, they'll hit every 10 minutes, and then boom, they'll go down. The earth is in travail. The birth pangs are picking up. The rapture is about to happen. Um, would I like to pinpoint the day? I would, but at the end of the day, I think Amos 3, 7, God will fulfill and he will tell us exactly. And so what if, you know, uh, what if we see a Damascus event, a huge, huge earthquake where there's waves in the seas are roaring? What if we see uh, an attack uh, unrivaled to anything we've seen so far on Israel or North Korea, South Korea? I mean, you, you name it, it is it, all of the birth pangs are going insane right now. And, and everybody's not seeing it from their perspective, <clears throat> you know, so we just keep watching. Again, I will be live tonight on Black Swan with Shane. I think Bob will be there. I think Josh will be there. And I don't I don't recall who else. He, he said there'll be a few of us there. So 5 p.m. today, which is in an hour and 45 minutes. We'll see you then. Keep your eyes up. Keep watching. Remember, go to a quiet place by yourself. Nobody needs to know, and you don't need to tell anybody. And accept the Lord in your heart. And uh, let's all get vertical. Didn't plug that in. I bet you that would help a lot.
let's all get vertical. Let's get uh, let's go to heaven and uh, take over our new jobs. It's going to be amazing on that day. Can't hardly wait. So, all right, Repo Man sixty four. Like, comment, share, and subscribe, and we will chat with you all again. See you tonight at five.